Greetings everyone, this is First Centurion 753 with the next episode of Principia, Masters of Science. It's been another week and again, I don't remember exactly where I was or what I was doing here. And unfortunately the uh, scroll does not save, that would be helpful. Uh, but looks like I'm in Disposition of Light. I've got one, two, three papers published, two papers written, what is this? Light reflects as it passes through a medium. Someone beat me out in that, I think, right? And then this one. Speed of light is infinite. That's just wrong. Okay, so I'm not going to publish that. And we no longer have apparatuses here. And I, now I'm starting to remember. I think there's, yes, the slide rule is in arithmetic. And it appears as though... Pi is an irrational number, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try to prove that theory, right? That's the, the way to go. Let's prove that pi is an irrational number, because it never ends, right? Is that what it is? It ought to be the pi is an irrational number if I could just... Just as my theory hypothesized, I should incorporate this fact into my paper, make it publicly known. There we go. 19, we're at 69, and I need to get to, what, 90? Edmund Halley. Oh, you know what? I was there for a reason, wasn't I? I think I was in Paris for a reason. Is that Edmund Halley? That is Edmund Halley. I could talk to him, or I could talk to some of these other people. Who is in my field? Mathematics, arithmetic. I am the authority. We also have Gottfried, who I think I'm friends with, and uh, Jacob Bernoulli. Bernoulli. Way ahead of him. He wrote, uh oh. He wrote a paper. That pi is an irrational number. I think he's gonna beat me out here. Uh, no. I think he's gonna beat me on that one. Perfect. Fifth perfect number. Oh, Pi is an irrational number is already published. I'm not even gonna mess with that anymore. Why am I even messing with that? I need to go after this invention. I think I might. That might be the end of arithmetic for me. I need to get out of arithmetic. That's horrible. That's a horrible situation. Isaac Barrow. Now, knowledge of arithmetic at 40 does open up the next level for me here. So I think that's probably what I should do. Who's that? All right. Johans is an expertise in whatever this area is of astronomy that I'm not familiar with. There is no expert in the identity of light. No one is even interested in the identity of light at this point. Okay. I need to pull out of arithmetic. Because I'm not going for any inventions. Am I? I don't know. Let's at least correspond with one of these guys to see what that does again, because I forget. Correspond with Edmund Halley. I don't want to correspond. I want to correspond with Jacob Bernoulli. Oh, I thought he was, uh, his location is Berlin. Who else is in Paris? Robert Boyle. What? Where did I click on? I meant that must have been last turn, huh? I guess I'm losing my mind. Jean Picard. Robert Boyle. Johan. None of these guys are interested in the same topic as me. All right, I'm pulling it together, I'm sorry. I gotta find these guys where they are and correspond with them, but should I even bother? Should I really bother or should I start going after the identity of light? Or should I start, hmm. 
tough decisions here. Disposition of light. There are several inventions here, but I am not I am not an inventor. I've been focusing more on the uh, the scholarly efforts. Not so much on the Dynamics is the other area. And right now Christian Huygens is the only one interested in dynamics. He has an invention, it looks like. Pendulum clock. Which I think I can buy now that he had that, right? That was an option of something to buy. So once you invent stuff, then you can buy it. So that's all right, so we found that out. That's interesting. That's cool. So maybe I should go into invention. Let's go back to my laboratory. I have my arithmetic tool. Ah. So many things to balance out here. This is a lot a lot to deal with. More reasoning and arithmetic. Let's reason out some arithmetic. Maybe I'll actually get one of these inventions after all. I do want to dominate arithmetic and I want to close out the field if possible. It's probably going to be a while before that happens. I could read a book. Let me, you know what? I'm going to read a book on mathematics. I think. Financial aid, that's always good. Always welcome. Christian Huygens. Okay, we'll take it. Yes. Good. Good relations promoting there. Somebody left Paris. Disposition of springs. Oh, and I have a pendulum clock here. I must have been going into that direction. Is that, um, yes, yeah, there's not a lot here, I think that's the direction I need to go in, sorry, <laughs> it's all coming back to me now, alright, dynamics, because dynamics is an area where we are, like, really good, we are superior in dynamics, and mathematics, so who is in Paris now, card, boil, and Johan. Comets. And astronomy. Not much in dynamics there. Boyle, he's a science, biology guy, isn't he? Or a chemistry guy, sorry. But not biology. Thermology. That's a chemistry thing. And then Jean Picard. I don't know if you can hear these kids screaming outside my apartment. It is the afternoon, so they just got home from school. They're getting really loud now. Um, what does E stand for? Excellent. Astronomy, biology, nothing. No one here I want to really communicate with. Okay. Okay. Let's go into Disposition of Springs. One paper published by Robert Hooke. Oh yeah, Robert Hooke. Ah, that's my rival. I hate that guy. Let's take him down. What paper did he publish? Uh, reached a conclusion that the period of a spring's oscillation is not determined by the breadth of its oscillation. This fact should play... Okay. Sure. This is not a field that I know personally too well. Christian Huygens. Ah, Christian Huygens. I could talk to him about dynamics. Alright, back to the laboratory. We got the pendulum clock. Let's go ahead and experiment with that pendulum clock. A hundred. Wow. Illuminating. The period of oscillation is the same 
irrespective of the laterally or perpendicularity of the spring. Yes, I don't know what any of this means. Robert Hook. Still trying to challenge my paper. On the fifth perfect number? I know that one's right. I'm taking Hook down. Hook is going down. I probably shouldn't do that. I probably should like try to cooperate with people in this game and work together to advance science. But that's not fun. There's got to be a way to make him lethargic, I think. I think I have to sacrifice some of my uh, fame points to make him lethargic. Let's go back to that laboratory real quick. Scientists. Nope, I want other information. On scientists. Who's got the most fame here? Robert Boyle has the most fame. We're way behind on fame. I do want to catch up. And I do want to become a uh, fellow at the university. Did I do that yet? What position am I? Not inducted to any of these. Change profession. What, what profession am I? I don't remember. Ah, I am a fellow of the academy. Income is 20. There's probably more. Fellow of the academy of Paris. Income is 20. Royal scientist at Hanover is 25. Which I could go for, but I'm not going to do that. Because I don't want to go to Hanover. Diplomat in Berlin. Or French government official. I guess that's the one I'm going for here with 800 fame. So, that means that there's no one here I can talk to. Picard, Robert Boyle, no, I'm not talking to any of these people. Let's attend a lecture on dynamics. 30 funds required. Okay. This should boost. We're talking about the swing of a pendulum. Knowledge of dynamics is up to 21. I wonder if knowledge just matters for unlocking the next field. Hey, Godfrey. We're supposed to be friends, I thought. But I guess not anymore. This is getting a little redundant. Okay, uh, it's been about 15 minutes, and I think I'm going to call it quits right now, because I'm not sure I'm really up for this game at the moment. Probably try again tomorrow morning and play one more. But, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if so, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.